how would you make a thing jiggle like that? Or like that? Or like these? And how would you do it quickly? Because I don't see the point of animating this by hand. I had rather use a single slider like that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna rotate this thing, use some math stuff to control jiggly rotation by one slider, and move this whole thing up so it doesn't penetrate the surface below it. So let's test our geometry node setup on our default cube. We want to rotate it easily, and the easiest way, and the fastest for your PC, is to just convert that into an instance and rotate this instance. Now you can access the rotation. Let's take a look at the jiggly behavior essence. It's kind of crucial, because when you know what creates the effect you want, you can actually start creating it rather than just connecting different stuff and praying. So object rotates on this axis, and does this thing also on one of the remaining axes? It bounces from left to right, from right to left a few times, and it gradually decreases until it stops. Okay, so we have a plan. We know what we need to do. Let's separate the X, Y, Z because we need to control them separately. Let's start with the simpler thing, the Z. We can just use a mix node, change the A value, and by just dragging this slider, we have our rotation. Let's plug this factor into the group input so we can control it outside of the node tree. We can ease it also, I mean make the rotation smoother. We can use a float curve and adjust its shape. If that looks confusing to you, let me explain. This is a super simple chart, which remaps the incoming values. Previously, we had a linear chart, so 0.5 on the x-axis would also be 0.5 on the y-axis, but we changed that. Now, 0.5 on the x is no longer 0.5, it's 0.85. We changed the behavior how that value rises. It rises quickly at the beginning, but it smooths out in the end. Okay, now it's time for the jiggly bounces on the sides. Let's disconnect the z for now, so we make our lives easier. We will use the same factor from the group input as we want to keep it simple. We wanted bounces, so we will use a math operation that bounces, a ping pong. It basically wraps the values from zero to whatever you have in the second socket. If we move our factor, we see that nothing has changed. That's because the ping pong operation from zero to one won't ping pong a value that doesn't go above one. So we need to multiply the factor by something. If you put even integers, like four, the cube will do four movements, forward, back, forward, back. But yeah, we want it to go left to right, like full ping pong. We need to remap the zero to one to minus one to one. So use map range, change the to minimum to minus one, and change the interpolation type to smoother step. As name suggest, it will make it smoother. Now, by just multiplying this, we can control the strength of the effect. And we also want the jiggling to gradually decrease. So multiply it again by our factor, but inverted. So it goes from one to zero. We almost have it. Now let's move this whole mesh up. I'll use the same approach as I did in this tutorial, but wait. If you like this tutorial, please go down and hit subscribe and like, because it makes me feel good. I post tutorials and my work for clients, so you can take inspiration from my shit. Okay, so we will use a simple trick to move it up. We will use a convex hull to make this mesh simpler. Then we want to realize it, so it's actual geometry. Then we want to check the lowest point Z position. We will use the attribute statistic node, check the Z, like that. Then multiply it by minus one and offset everything on the Z by that. Now let's connect back the Z rotation and plug some stuff into the group input. The strength of the bounce effect, the number of bounces, and the strength of the Z rotation. We go to the animation tab and quickly animate it. As we have some easing already in the geometry nodes, I will set the interpolation to linear, and we have our effect ready. You can use this on any mesh, and it will work, which is kind of cool, but sometimes you have more complex things to jiggle, and that's not a single mesh. So we need to find a way around this. For example, this is a barrel, made with several meshes. I put all of them into a separate collection, and this is important, set their position to the world center. Now, we simply bring this collection into the node tree and replace our old geometry input with this collection, and it works. If you're getting lost, you just need to take your time with geometry nodes. It requires practice, as with every other skill. Oh, and there's also one other thing if you don't like to play with these math values. Instead of this math shit, I can just create an empty. Bring this empty into the geometry nodes, set it to relative, plug the rotation into the rotation. Animate this empty like that. and it looks like that. Anyway, hope you liked the tutorial. 
please leave a like and subscribe if you want. By the way, thank you for 12,620 subscribers. Thank you. Oh, one last thing, I promise. I recently created an app. This is my fifth attempt, to be honest. It lets you track your time spent on projects. And if you're making money on Blender, it's kind of cool as it shows you your real hourly rate per project and overall with goals and other stuff. I am just obsessed with optimizing. That's why I use geometry nodes and why not optimize making money? Thank you once again.